Hey, um, I'm Real Gordon. Um, I'm the producer and founder of Alchemize Visionary Art Congress on the Big Island of Hawaii. Learning about visionary art is as simple as Googling some of the great names in visionary art, which are, you know, obviously um, Alex and Allison Gray are some of the masters, Robert Bonosa, Martina Hoffman, uh, Kerry Thompson and Luke Brown, who are both shown in the show today, some of the leading masters of visionary art in the modern era. So Googling those names and looking at their personal websites, um, you know, uh, gives one a chance to really get to understand it. And then also, I think, um, studying the ancient methodologies of ancient cultures, Toltec culture, Olmec culture, Mayan culture, ancient Egyptian culture, uh, ancient Hindu culture, uh, ancient Japanese and Chinese and Asian, uh, you know, Indo-Chinese cultures, you know, uh, island Polynesian cultures, you know, and being attuned to the indigenous vibration allows you to open up in a, in a, in a, into, a, into a state where you're able to receive the information that has been there for man for all time. And to learn how to put it into an image is a, is a, is a powerful discipline. That visionary art as a movement is at the cutting edge of the modern art movement today. Um, and it's my belief, personally, um, I espouse the ideal that visionary art, music, and education can and will save our species. I think uh, when you go down that process of education and begin to study some of these indigenous vibrations and listen to the words of the masters and the teachers and, and meditate, I think that your art can only be imbued with that sacred power. And I think that that requires a discipline. It requires a discipline to um, study, uh, to, 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 to read, to expose yourself to a massive amount of information with an open mind, you know, and not be just selectively choosing one thing or another that's very comfortable for you. You should step outside of what you know. We started to incorporate aspects of visionary education, uh, elucidation, uh, shamanic practices, yoga practices, health practices, meditation practices, and uh, it grew beyond there. And so I, I think visionary art can best be described as art that uses uh, spiritual, transcendent, and uh, sacred principles in it. Um, it's often imbued with a quality of visible light. Um, and it uses uh, methodologies and ideas from many ancient uh, uh, meditations, religions. Uh, uh, is motivated by a lot of ancient history and culture and texts. Um, and uh, you know, I think that you know the visionary art movement in general uh, is very, very old. It dates back all the way to the you know 16th century to Archimboldo and uh, many of the other you know uh, masters of the genre in the ancient days. But it's really come into its own uh, from the 1970s on and has become a prominent modern art movement. And when you get in the presence of an excellent piece of visionary art, um, I think that the viewer, when they experience it, they're oftentimes compelled um, uh, to contemplate. You know, um, it, it forces you to stop, to take a breath, to do a bit of self-examination, um, and to look deep inside yourself and allow the images, allow the sacred geometry, allow the light, allow the stories, the myths, the fables, the spirituality behind it to fill your mind and to fill your spirit and to create a sense of uh, a sense of place, a sense of worship. Um, and when you become in a, in a worshipful state in front of a piece of art, you know, I think that that opens man up to our, a higher self, you know. Um, and if we spend more time in contemplation and more time in the higher self, in the higher realms, uh, embracing spiritual and sacred and illuminated themes, uh, pictures, ideas, and visions, then we stand a much better chance as a species of being here in the long run and being able to educate uh, our, our youth and, uh, and, and decorate and celebrate. Um, and, you know, I think we stand a better chance in the long run. I don't fear death, I don't fear great catas catastrophic change, you know. Um, if that's the inheritance of uh, what mankind gets, then I suppose that's what we get. Will it happen in 2012? I think not. I think we're going to be around for a good long time. Um, and I think we're going to be given a chance to redeem ourselves, redeem our culture, redeem our societies, and uh, show the Creator God, you know, uh, and, 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 our, and our, our celestial brothers and sisters that we have the ability to rise above and the ability to pull it off, you know. I really, I think, I think it's going to be just fine. The best thing that you can do as an aspiring artist is to draw and paint and draw and paint and draw and paint. And all the time that you're not drawing and painting, spend your time reading, discussing, thinking, meditating, eating right, living right, sleeping enough. And I also espouse personally for myself the use of entheogenic medicine. You know, um, the painting that we just described definitely has images in it that uh, are specifically entheogenic in nature. I personally believe that the power plants and the entheogenic medicines were put here for the elucidation of man, specifically that we might discover them and uh, enhance uh, uh, 
and embrace the higher realms of our culture, you know. Um, and, I, and I think that that's a very modern consciousness that, that you know, in the modern time, the, the, the ability to openly have these substances and medicines around to select from and to use and to partake of and then have them affect our speech, our music, our songs, our written words, our paintings, you know, is an awesome, amazing privilege, you know, um, and one that's not usually open to the massive. Um, as a visionary art family, I'm a member of Tribe 13. Um, Tribe 13 curates the gallery at Alchemize. Um, so we are a united, strong family, um, and we are dedicated uh, to taking this movement, spreading it worldwide, um, and doing everything we can to, uh, you know, show people everywhere uh, that this meditative and contemplative and spiritual meditation um, is, is one of the hottest things going, really, in modern art. I, I think that we just can unite as a collective, you know, and really and really hold to our own. And, and, and uh, one of the things that you'll find when interacting with our particular tribe is that we are a very strong family. Um, we're, we're, we are we are brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, um, uh, you know, parents and children. I'm a father myself, and I'm raising my son to be uh, attuned to and sensitive to these um, different ideas. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think just beginning to just make a village culture, you know, and really be true to ourselves and true to our art form. And, uh, and 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 you know, finding that unity and that strength together uh, to come together and celebrate and 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 pontificate, if you will. Um, and many of the artists, uh, over, in fact, almost all of the artists featured in the seventh annual interdimensional art show are Alchemize featured artists. So when you come to Alchemize, you can definitely count on having uh, more of this, even uh, th this kind of art, and many more uh, extreme examples of our culture, our music, our lifestyle. Um, and what it is that we're trying to propitiate and uh, create for humanity at large.